Hi everyone and welcome to the Canon 5D Mark IV V's the Nikon D750 High Dynamic Range Test. Um, I'm going to basically take a series of shots, underexpose them, one, two and three stops, ISO 1600, 32, 64, 12,800 and we're going to see how good we can recover those shadows and how well we can re recover the files and at what cost. And I'd just like to say a big thanks to Dale's Photographic for making this video possible. Um, so in this video I've taken four pictures from each camera at roughly the same exposure. We have shot 1632, 64 and 12,800. So if we just look at my screen here you'll see there's the Nikon 16. 32, 64 and 12, 8, all three stops underexposed. Then you'll see the cannons a little bit darker for some reason. It's just the way the meters work. We've got 1600, 32, 64 and 12, 8. So what we're going to do is raise all these up three stops and then we're going to have a look at the noise. So what I'll do is to ahead of time, if I just click on the first Nikon image and hit enter and then we sync that across, I can sync that all the way across to the others. So now they've all been lifted three full stops um, because there were three stops dark and underexposed. So if I just click off this now and we click on the first image, um, we'll just hide the tabs now because we don't need them. So you'll see if we just do a before and after, there's before and this is the Canon, uh, the Nikon D750. Um, so what we'll do now is we'll press the compare key I'll just bring the tabs back up because um, I need to see where the Nikon 1600 is, uh, the, uh, the Canon. And there you go. Some unknown reason, we want this one here. And we want this one here. There you go, hallelujah. Right, so on the left hand side, we've got the Nikon 1600, three full stops from underexposed, you'll see it's a bit brighter on the highlights, it's just the way the camera metered the scene. I did try it a couple of times and, and it's just the way it is. Um, it, it must be the big, I don't know, the dynamic range is obviously broader, I don't know, but anyway, there you go. You'll see that the um, 1600 ISO and it's three full stops on. If we just zoom in, we'll look at the noise and you'll see basically that um, the, let's just try get the corner of the set here. This corner here on the city there you go so that's that same corner there and you'll see that they look pretty much similar I'd say maybe the Nikon might be a touch cleaner um, but overall it looks good they both look good so what we'll do is now we'll go to 3200 and 3200 on the Canon and um, we'll just hide these tabs and again looking at them both there the Canon is on the right and the Nikon on the left. Let's just zoom back out and go over to this corner of the city. And I'm just having a look now. Let the Canon uh, load in. I don't think I built one-to-one -one previews. Sorry about that. We'll just have to wait for it to load. Um, I am using the MacBook inside the office. It's too noisy in the house. Um, so basically, there you go. That's that done nicely. So again, if you have a look, th there's not really much in it. I'd say maybe the... Um, the Nikon again might be a touch cleaner and um, we'll just zoom in. But, I mean, there's not much in it at all at 3200. So what we'll do is I'll now go to 6400. Sorry, I'll just move that to 6400. And um, we'll get the 6400. I'm going to my 64 there. I want to be that. There you go again. So we'll just add that Canon, uh, Nikon on the left, Canon on the right. Don't forget. These are all three stops under exposed, and I've put three stops of exposure compensation on. I'll just click here in the corner of the set E. And again, I mean, they both look around the same. Maybe the, the Canon is a touch worse, but I mean, it's probably nitpicking. They both look fantastic. Um, we'll just shift tab again just to take this off, and we'll now go to the final 12,800, and we'll move the, Nike, uh, the Canon 5D Mark IV. Now, to me, I can clearly see without zooming in that the Canon 5D Mark IV is losing here. You can just see as is, it looks a lot more noisier. That's without zooming in. 
Um, yeah, the, there's not again. There's not a great deal in it, if I'm honest, because the 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 Nikon's a little bit brighter. There's not much in it. I'd give the dynamic range. I'd probably say they're near enough on par with each other. I'll just take the compare key off now, and uh, what we'll do is we'll just um, shift tab, and I'll just fly through the images and show you the before and after. Uh, press the D key, and is it this D key? We'll select this image, and then we'll go before. So, I mean, that's the Nikon at three full stops under, 3200, three stops under, 6400, three stops. I mean, it's a lot to bring the image back. It's near enough complete darkness. I'd say, to be fair, now we're on the Canon, I'd say the Canon was is slightly bringing back more detail because it slightly was darker on the exposure. Um, but there you go. I mean, 1600, 3200. I mean, it looks absolute. I mean, that's 3200 recovered. 6400, that's how it came out. That's near enough black. Um, so, to be honest, I'm, you know, I'm going to say, in all fairness, that it's a tie. So, if you're after a Canon 5D Mark IV or a Nikon D750 for dynamic range, it's a tie. The only thing that I would say is that the Nikon D750 is slightly better than the Canon. The only thing that I would say is that the Nikon D750 is so much cheaper. And it's still performing. The ISO performance of the dynamic range is performing as good. Um, I will have the D850 tomorrow. So we'll try these cameras against the D850 as well. Um, I'm assuming they'll get spanked up. But you never know. But I mean, the D750 has really held up on its own, if you think about it, against a 5D Mark IV, which has come out like two years. Is it two or three years after? And it's a lot more expensive. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. Please comment and subscribe and please leave a thumbs up.